Welcome, everybody, to Ask a Pro episode number 23 with uh, Ma Williams and Kelly Williams-Walsh and Tom Payne. Uh, Join me for this episode, and it is going to be fantastic. First, before we get into it, some best practices. Be sure to put your questions or comments into the Q&A or the chat. I'll see them. If it, just give me a couple minutes if I'm engaged in a question or some sort of a discussion with uh, Tom or Kelly. So we'll, but we will get to them. If you're watching this or listening to this uh, as a recording, or you've, you're listening to it as a podcast, um, reach out to us. If you, if the information on how to get a hold of Kelly and who she wants you to get a hold of, because I know you're going to want to talk to her about an ADU and what they can provide. So be sure to look for it in the in the description. And if you do have any kind of questions for me, you can always go over to the ADU University, and whether it's one of our social media pages, and drop a question in there. You, I'm not that hard to find. And so, first of all, Kelly, I have been looking forward to this conversation for more than a year, uh, because Ma Williams, I regard as probably one of the premier manufactured home dealers in all of California. Unfortunately, you're only in, a, a, uh, you service a small area in Southern California, but you ha- your company has been around for 30 years? 50 plus, 50 since 1969, plus. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fantastic. So I'm just really glad and I'm super excited that you're here. Good, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, looking forward to the conversation. ADUs are um, just such a great thing, I think, for all the people of California and for what we do and so many families, again, whether it be, you know, mom and dad moving in with the family helping them or whether it's young families that can't get a house. And we've got so many of those actually that Tom's helping our customers with right now that they're actually looking to build a home. Um, actually they're building a home. We have one actually family that's helping to to build a home for his mom, but thinking of his actual um, nephews that, you know, once the mom actually moves out go to Texas full time, you know, thinking that his nephews can probably live there too, because it's so hard to actually get a home that people can afford right now in California. So yeah, California is really, really expensive. And Tom, so everybody knows if they haven't seen it in the description of this webinar is a licensed C47 contractor. And a C47 is specific to manufactured homes. Welcome, Tom. Glad you're here. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Well, first, I, I wanted Kelly to start off because I am very active in one of the largest Facebook pages, about 24,000 people. It's like called How to ADU. And the terminology and the phraseology and the definitions are just crazy. People don't really know what the defin- what the what to call a manufactured home ADU. They're calling it factory built. Um, they're calling it um, prefab, modular. They call it anything that would denote that it's not built on site. And so it gets, I think, kind of confusing because now being kind of thrown into the mix of that being built off site are tiny homes, Mm -hmm. which when you get into tiny homes, not that's not some of those aren't even built to the ANSI code, which is the RV code, which is not for permanent um, habitability. So can you talk a little bit about this just 30,000 foot in the air? What what is a manufactured home dealer and what is a manufactured home and what is the product that you offer? Sure. So manufactured home dealers are governed by HCD and they are what we we have to make sure that we do things right, that we comply with the rules and regulations that are there to protect consumers. And that's a big one. Right. So that's, I think, really important where if you if you have you buy a tiny home, like you said, they're not even built, some of them to any code at all. And so um, our homes are actually built to a HUD code, which is a federally approved code, which is a nice thing as Tom can actually probably chime in on too as well. As far as permits are concerned, it's really great to be able to have a home that's actually got a federally approved code for permitting. The counties, the cities can't really say anything at all about the home itself. So it should streamline the permitting process for that. Um, But as far as our homes are concerned, um, they're 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 beautiful. They're gorgeous. If you haven't seen them, if you haven't walked through them, they they're just 
the the quality of these homes, the the look, the feel of them. They, I mean, people literally have walked through the homes with me and we have models set up and they feel them and they touch them and they say, wow, it's like a real home. It's like, yeah, it is a home, you know, two by six, con you know, construction, 16 inch on center. They are built just like a site built home, except they're built in sections off site. And then we actually bring them to the site and actually put them together in sections on site to complete them. So you get the economies of scale of actually being able to actually build in a factory environment and then take those sections and actually put them together on site. And it's a, it's a great way to be able to get a, a cost efficient home and um, a custom cost efficient home. And I think that, that you're touching on a bunch of stuff um, just because I know this topic so well. Um, you are, you have, and there aren't that many of them, but you have a display lot. So you are one of the few locations where, and I get these calls a lot. It's like, hi, where, where can I go see your homes? I'm like, um, well, what's closer? Bakersfield, Ventura, Long Beach, or Hemet? And I'm trying yeah. to see where... Or you can go to Corona and see the factory. But if you want to see a bunch of them, you need to find a display yard. Yeah. And Ma Williams has um, has a display yard. And so people can make an appointment. Do they just show up? How, how do you usually like that to happen? Yeah. So we have a sales center right now in our homes. With the, the number of models we have can fluctuate because we do sell our models. So right now, I think we have, um, I think we have six right now. We're in the transition of selling one. So I think we have six right now that are on display. We might even have seven. Um, so that kind of fluctuates, but you can come and walk through the homes. We're open seven days a week. Um, however, you if you want to really have the time to talk to a salesperson and and get the the a lot of questions answered and that kind of stuff, you may want to make an appointment. Um, there's times where we get so busy that being able to help people, it gets difficult, right? So we, we try to make sure that we help as many people as we can. But if you have a lot of questions and you want to go through floor plans or get pricing or like that kind of stuff, it would be best to make an appointment. But other than that, we welcome anybody in at all times. And um, we're there to give as much information as we can and to help people with the process and, and the homes and again, pricing. And I think, and I want to sort of make this point, not every dealer that has a a sales center or a display yard is as welcoming and as friendly as Ma Williams. So they they kind of in the industry are known to say, yeah, come in. You know, we we want to help you with the process. And where other places that I've heard a lot of stories, they're like, well, you need to make an appointment and you can't go through these homes without somebody. Yeah. And that <laughs> and it's like, I understand the necessity of that in some places. I get it. But I'm just really trying to drive home the fact that if, if you want to drive to Hemet and you want to just look at some homes, really get an idea of what they are. Uh, Ma Williams is a great place to do that. Yeah, we're not One a hard the... sales company either, right? To you come, don't feel like if you come in, we're going to tackle you to the ground. We're there and we're open. We're friendly. You know, we'll give you coffee and we'll welcome you in and let you go see the homes. We really aren't a, a hard sales place. Like we're, we're not going to tackle you to the ground. We will give you the information you need and then we'll help you out. But beyond that, that's, you know, people have come in time and time and time and time again. People have come in over five to 10 years at points. So again, well, you're welcome to come. Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Um, Tom, we are going to get to you because I have a ton of yeah, questions as yeah. well. So thank you for being here and being patient with us sure. um, as I go this because I, I I have a huge list of things I want to kind of talk about. The uh, We want to get rid of some, some just sort of things that I think are important that a lot of people don't really talk about. And when folks are looking at manufactured homes for an, uh, an ADU, and they're seeing a lot of companies that are really not disclosing what they are as opposed to you know, something that's built, stick built, or something that complies with California Building Code and Title 24. And I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But as you're looking around for a manufactured home, you may stumble across a dealer who is rep representing to sell the home at wholesale. And this is going to, is typically somebody who's from out of state, and they're going to sell it to you. And they're not going to charge any tax because they don't have to, because you may not know that you as a consumer are responsible for use tax. 
And so that's basically, if you're buying something from out of state, you have a responsibility to pay that tax yourself or be assessed. And I'm not sure, is it as re- prevalent as it was years ago where these guys are in the market and are trying to confuse people? Do you see them doing that still? That happened um, still quite a bit where you know people talk about actually buying a home from out of state. Um, and then trying to price compare, you know, there's, 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 sorry, let me go back to that to finish that off. So if they're going to price compare, and that's a huge component of it, because when you're looking at it, it comes down to about six and a half percent is basically what it is, just round numbers of the whole cost of the house, the options, that kind of thing. So if you're looking at the, the, the price of what you're, what you're actually purchasing from an out-of-state dealer, by the time it gets here, depending on where you're at, right, tax-wise, that's what you're going to have to pay. Um, so it's it's an important one to make sure that you actually do take a, take that into account. And out-of-state dealers, a lot of times, won't tell you that. We, we try to make sure that we tell people about that when they're actually shopping. Um, it, it probably was a bigger issue. Um, I would say probably about four years ago, but I would say that definitely consumers um, seem to have caught on to that more now, but I, we, we try to make sure that we definitely inform them of that. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that's, that's a difficult when you're shopping for manufactured homes, what's included, what's not included, like um, setup and site preparation, the differences between that, right? So setup is putting the pieces of the home together, delivering it, setting it up. Site preparation is actually preparing the ground for the for the home, which Tom can talk more about. Um, th- so there's there's a lot of, you know, what's included in the price and what's not, and and different dealers will do different things. And so, it's, um, it's, you know, trying to break it down. And again, we, Ma Williams is, we try to be helpful with in that regard, right? We try to explain what we have in there, what you need. We try to make sure we have what everyone needs in the price of our home. And then beyond that, we can add in anything extra that, you know, you may want um, or anything like Tom's costs that for site preparation. Um, so it's, 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 it's hard. it is hard because sometimes our homes go into parks, right? So there's some things that some people need in, in some regards there that they don't need actually in a, in a, in a private property development over here. And so it's, it's a more complicated process in that way. Um, but we just have to talk again, that's where we have to have, it's really much better if you're having a one-on-one conversation with each person, what, what they need so that we can make sure to give them a, a price at more specifically on what their development is and their, their project is. And then we talk to them about making sure that they know if they're out of state, they've got to actually watch out for that. And because the out-of-state company is not going to give them as much um, guidance. They're just going to sell them a unit and you're responsible for everything else. And, and I, we've and I, actually had people call us and tell us that once it gets here, they'll call us and say, we're stuck. They just delivered the home and now we're stuck. We actually can't get permits and we're stuck. And do you have a contractor that can help us? Can you do you have anyone that can do the setup for us? And it's really, really tough to be in that position. It is. It is hard. Um, the... So, <laughs> Manufactured homes built off site, built to the HUD code, delivered in sections. And I want to talk a little bit about this um, to give uh, Tom a chance to kind of chime in. And then Kelly, I'd like you to start with what Ma Williams does is you're taking them, you're ordering the home. Someone's going to come to you. You're going to look at uh, models. You're going to look at the floor plans. And, you're, and since this is a you know about ADUs, you're going to have some sizes because there's a lot of different floor plans that for people to choose from, whether it's a single wide one section or a double wide two sections. The two section homes are the ones that need to be joined together. You have the two pieces kind of married along the marriage line. And so that involves a little bit more work. So let's say they, 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 they've identified a floor plan. They have say, Hey, I, and now they're sitting down to go, okay, what are some of my up upgrades or options that you see people are doing? Because one of the things that I share with people a lot and I give them information is the list of the standard things that are included. So for people that are you know watching or listening to this, you may there a manufactured home by code is required to come habitable. You need mm-hmm. to be able to live in it. That's not the same with a traditionally site-built thing because the plans exist. 
that will make it habitable. These things have to leave the factory that somebody could live in it almost immediately. And so there are what we call standard options. And so it's good to kind of get an idea because a lot of people don't think like, oh, wow. I mean, the, the furnace was already included. The heater is included. You mean my countertops and my cabinets and the toilets and the showers are all included in the standard price. So once people get an idea of what that is, then they can say, well, maybe I want a, an upgrade or an option. And so they'll be able to talk to you about that and your, your, your sales team. The other part is that you're, once they figure that out, they price it, they work through it, then they're going to then sign off on the order because they're going to have an idea of what the cost is going to be. Then they're going to deliver it to, you're going to set take that order and give it to the factory and have it built. Can you talk a little bit about what that process is um, at your dealership? Sure. So we we go through, um, we, we basically go through the process. If we open escrow, we can help with financing if they need financing. Um, at that point, we get them with a site contractor. So we... We, we choose a home that they think they want. And let's start there. We choose a home they, we, they think they want, right? They like it. They think they want it. At that point, we open escrow on that home. Um, again, we get them financed if we, they, 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 they want or need financing. We get a site contractor like Tom to go out there and actually do an assessment on their property. At that point, we might even be able to actually determine that house that they think they want may or may not work, right? If there's actually, a, um, if there's a size issue going into the back of the property, and maybe they can't do a 15 wide, maybe they need a 20 wide, two 10 wides. So we can change the home at that point. So it kind of gives us an idea of which direction we need to go. Once we know kind of the home that they, that will work for their property or we have setback issues or whatever. So once we know the home is gonna work, then we can go through the design phase of the, of the process and we have gobs and gobs of options. So you can do a lot of energy efficient options. I mean, all of our homes actually are energy star homes already. So um, that, that is amazing. But beyond that, you can do solar sheathing on the tops of the house. You can actually do inside options where you can do um, you can do granite and quartz and upgrade cabinets and upgrade flooring. And you can do, um, you can do a handicap accessible home. You can do grab bars. You can do roll in showers. You can do, um, you can do wider doorways. There's so many different options that you can do with the house. If you have a floor plan that you like, but it's not quite the, the, the length or width you need, you can stretch it, you can shrink it right? Because they're going to build this for you. So there's a lot of different options that you can do, a lot of different customizations that you can do. And then once you actually choose the options that you want, and you basically solidify the home and the options that you want for your price, for your budget, at that point, then we actually move forward and we can get the home engineered and get basically Tom everything he needs to proceed with his next portion of the job, which is actually going to be pulling permits for the project. Excellent. And thank you for that. Um, Tom, can you share with us how you fit into the, the Ma Williams picture with a client typically? How, tell us how that works. Sure. Absolutely. So basically, as Kelly said, um, the first stop for the customer is the uh, is Ma Williams. And to go through and pick out the home that they want, um, they share some information with Ma Williams concerning their property. Um, and, um, and that gets passed along to me. I get notified, uh, get a notice that, uh, uh, that, uh, to contact these, um, people and, uh, we get in touch. We schedule a time to come out and take a look, um, uh, at their property, do a site assessment. And, um, of course there's a lot of things that we have to look at in terms of, um, <clears throat> particularly when we're in a more of an urban setting, uh, we're, we're dealing with uh, much smaller lots and um, access becomes a big question mark. And so I'm the first one to take a look at that to see, OK, first of all, where does the customer want to place the home? Um, we determine if that's going to work. Sometimes it doesn't work. And so it's left up to me to make some suggestions as to 
okay, this area might be a better spot for a number of different reasons, whether it's setback issues or it's access or something that I see that they haven't seen yet in terms of uh, what's going to work best for them in terms of that placement of that home on that lot. Um, again, um, in those urban settings, it's largely delivery in, and, and how we can get the home into their property. Um, and that can be challenging. Um, you would be surprised at some of the spots that we get these homes into. We sometimes are entering in um, uh, city environments through an alley to access um, their lots. And uh, sometimes it's uh, we're coming in from the uh, street down a narrow uh, side yard to get it back into a backyard. So um, there's a lot of variable situations at worst case scenarios. If possible, these homes can be craned in. So um, we don't see that too often, but that's a possibility always. Yeah, and I think that's the, the uh, interesting part when you see the. Um those units kind of flying up over the houses <laughs> with the big cranes. Yeah, yeah, customers tend to get a little bit, a little bit nervous when they see their ADU um, hovering over their existing home. Uh, that makes them a little nervous until it gets placed on site. Yeah, we were thinking about going that way originally, and I got a quote from a crane company. Yeah. And so it's expensive. I think it's like you yeah. know close to 15000 for two sections. Um, yeah, we've had... They are. Yeah, we've had some situations where um, they're so challenging and so far the distance away from, let's say, this, this, this setup point, which is usually out in the street, the distance away is a big factor. And of course, the size of the home. But we've seen those prices go up to $60,000 sometimes for those sets. Uh, yeah, that would so, have been probably a really big crane. Big, big crane. Yeah. Might as well use a helicopter. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That, so, and that's, I think, you know, the person that I was talking to uh, the other day, and they're thinking about a manufactured home, he was in, in, in Burbank, and we have, there are 6,000 square foot lots, and they have smaller, like 900 square foot single family residential homes in the front. This was, a lot of this housing was built for Lockheed Martin. Um, so we have some uniformity, but unfortunately, you have these huge trees. And sometimes it's impossible to think how they're, they're going to do it. And this gentleman happened to have probably one of those perfect properties I've ever seen where for a manufactured home to be delivered. I'm like, you know how rare this is? <laughs> and so I was trying to it, it, explain it. And it is it is really exciting to be able to see that somebody, a homeowner, has the potential to do both. Okay. That, you know, where you guys are at, we have not the, the homes may have a little bit more land. They have a little bit more foot of a larger footprint. And the getting the manufactured home in the back is a little bit easier. Tom, with your with your company, what exactly are you going to be doing? You're setting the home. You're getting it on as foundation system. What else are you able to do for the client? Okay, so so really, it kind of starts from the beginning in terms of, uh, of course, we do this initial site assessment. And then when a customer chooses to move forward, then it's really now a matter of preparing for the permit process. And um, and uh, with, with manufactured ADUs, it's simplified because as Kelly has uh, talked about, these homes already come uh, ready set with a plan. Um, and those plans are already state approved. So when they get submitted to the particular um, building department, um, there is no, um, there is no uh, approval process of the plans because they're already approved. So that process is streamlined largely. Um, we do a lot of, a lot of our work is in uh, more rural areas where we are dealing with septic systems and uh, of course fire departments. And so um, there's a little bit more of a process when we get into those areas. Um, but essentially we're doing the permit process we're pulling the permits, um, and then we are preparing the sites for the for the home delivery, uh, whatever is necessary. Sometimes um, uh, it means we're have to, we need to uh, remove uh, landscaping. We have to create that path for that home to come in. Much of the time, there's fencing. Uh, gates that need to be removed in order to make room for the home to be able to be delivered. Uh, so we make arrangements for that. Um, and then once the home is placed, then uh, we build the foundation around that home. 
Um, and there's basically, in essence, there's two different types of, of foundation systems that we uh, work with. Um, and those are really based on whether or not the customer wants uh, an above grade um, type foundation where the home is sitting on top of the existing grade or if it is what we refer to as a low profile home where it is uh, recessed into the ground and a masonry foundation is built around it and uh, backfilled. And that way you have minimized the steps necessary to get into the home. And you also, I think the low profile set, which I'm a, a strong proponent of, gives it a much more residential feel. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, um, I was gonna say that in a typical situation, the way that you, the best way to look at these is not so much as a manufactured home in that application as it is, it's like any other home that would be built on a subfloor. A stick built home built on a subfloor is going to have the same type of elevation difference between the finished floor and grade. Yeah, and I think that those have a really, really good look. Now, an above ground setup is a lot more affordable because you're not having to do that level of foundation work and excavation. Right. But it, just for aesthetics and kind of long, just for the look of it, same thing. I think <clears> I really <throat> highly recommend it. And are, what are you, what are you all seeing out there in, as far as what your clients are doing? Are they, is it 50, 50, is it 30, 70 of people doing above ground or, or low profile? I, I would say that it's probably more like, um, somewhere more like a 90% uh, go low profile. Um, it's just the it's just the easy choice. I think in the big scope of things in terms of cost, it's not that big of a jump up to go to the low profile. Um, and that's just, uh, it's just an easier choice. The, the stairs that are required right. are minimal. Usually we're just putting in a couple of a concrete, uh, a couple of concrete steps and a landing. And uh, there's no guardrail or handrail required in that application. And that's just, uh, that just seems to be the, the, the choice of most customers. So for everybody who's uh, listening to this or will be listening to this, Kelly is shaking her head. It's like, no, it, it, you need to go low profile. I think. <laughs> and on, I, I also pr want to give you a plug on your, I think it's your Facebook page. You have a, a really great picture of a two section home with an attached garage, super clean. I mean, it just looks fantastic. And so I, I think if you want to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about now, you go to the Ma Williams Facebook page and you'll be able to see a lot of pictures there. I'm not sure if you have it on your Instagram, but I know mm -hmm. on the Facebook you have pictures of, of this low profile setup and you can also see how a garage would be integrated with that. And I'm not, because that's something that is really great because with manufactured homes, you're not prevented from having a garage attached. Nope. No, absolutely not. So it is, and I know Tom can explain this probably better than I can, but it's not necessarily attached, attached. You still actually have all four walls of the garage, but the, the roof line ties in so it looks attached. Um, and yeah, it's it's gorgeous. And you can do a California roof so that it actually has a different roof line. And I mean, you can make these things just beautiful. And again, I, the the part of having a a dealership or a company like Ma Williams and having the experience of to be able to kind of guide you down the path is really important. Also having a very close working relationship with a general contractor uh, like Tom, he, you're going to be able to go through the process a lot more simply and easily, efficiently. Efficiently is the word I wanted to kind of touch on. One of the things that Tom mentioned is that the permitting process is a lot easier. Kelly and I were just talking about this before we kind of got in, where we started this webinar. If you're looking at an ADU, and you're thinking, um, most people are thinking it's going to be stick built and they need to come up with a design. That means you have to go talk to an architect or a designer to come up with that floor plan, to design that floor plan. Designers at minimum are right around twelve, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to come up with a design. An architect is at minimum $30,000 if they're going to do everything. And they do a lot more. They're going to take in the structural, they're going to take into the energy efficiencies, and they're going to be able to kind of complete that ADU design for you um, and take care of a lot of other things with it. So that's an architect. With a manufactured home, the, the floor plan's already done. It, and it's, it's already kind of already been created. 
you can do some modifications the way that Kelly was saying. You could stretch it. You can shrink it. You can move some walls around. But you're not having to sit down and say, here's my 14,000 or here's my 30,000 to come up with a plan. That's what Kelly and her team are going to be able to do to say, well, what is it you want? And let's try to come up with a suggestion. Tom just mentioned, he's going to be handed off the, the plan, go to the site and say, yeah, this works, or maybe some, you might want to consider something else. So there's a huge savings. Not only are you, it's saving six months, eight months, if not longer to go through the design phase, but you're now being able to go into permitting and permitting is also expedited because the reviewer, whoever the jurisdiction is, is not going to have to go look at how the framing was or the mm -hmm. rough plumbing because it's already been inspected and signed off. So that's a huge, huge savings. Um, and thank you for that explanation, Tom. I really appreciate it. So one of the things I always get, um, I always like to tell people you know, the benefit of uh, manufactured home ADU is the solar requirement because you are not required to have solar with a HUD product, right? Correct. Correct. Not yet. <laughs> you can, but we'll you can have it. Um, yes. I'm making the reference. And if, if JD, if you're watching this sometime, I apologize for using you as an example. But they, he wants solar. There's solar on his primary home. And so you can have solar put on your ADU. Yeah, absolutely. We have a solar ready option where they will do a 30 pound roof load. I was just talking to a customer about this recently. Um, and uh, yeah, so a 30 pound roof load. And then um, they do something else with the electrical. Tom would know better on what they do with the electrical than I do. I think they just add yeah. the amperage or a little plug or something. Well, they'll usually, um, typically, the uh, uh, these homes come with a uh, uh, with a sub panel only, and uh, usually, if we know that it's going to be um, uh, solar, um, number one, we up the um, sub panel size from a one hundred amp to a two hundred amp, and number two, there is essentially a conduit that runs through the wall cavity on the outside from into the sub panel uh, stubbed up out of the roof with a roof jack uh, to accept, um, to accommodate the, uh, the electrical coming from the solar panels up above. And that's, a, that's pretty much it when it comes to- So it makes it um, very nice, it's, it's simple. So you have a solar yeah. provider, they come out, plug it in, you have your permits and you're, you're good to go. Correct. And then efficiencies, I think that's what Kelly mentioned earlier. You, you have a lot of efficiencies. The other thing that you and I were kind of talking about and kind of comparing notes is the savings. Cost savings versus site built versus a manufactured home. And mm -hmm. it's difficult for people to really kind of understand the differences one between the two. I think we're hopefully providing some of that, but the savings can be quite considerable. What have you seen, Kelly? So I, you know, I mean, I honestly don't, go out and actually get estimates on site builds. And Tom, I think is probably one to better actually do this, but from what we've actually heard, um, it's probably about 35% is what we actually think we've we've actually um, figured with the difference between a site built and a manufactured home. Tom, what do you think? Do you think I'm on on that or off? What do um, you think? Yeah, I, I, I think that, um... I think that um, probably the 35 to 50 percent would be a, a fair a fair assessment um, for sure. And that's I think huge. It, yeah, I think that it uh, certainly is worth noting the the timeline too, um, from start to finish. Um, our process is just much quicker. Uh, David, when you speak of bringing architects into the picture and and their process, they typically I like to tell folks when, especially when it comes to engineers, that. Uh, when it comes to a timeline for them, they're not sitting in their office waiting for me to call them to give them another job because they don't have anything else to do. They're very busy. Architects are very busy. And there is a fair amount of time involved just in the design. And so and, and then you have a um, you do have with stick built a um, 
a approval process with the de building division unless you are using a generic plan that they might have. Some jurisdictions have their own generic plans, which is helpful. Uh, but but the timeline is worth noting because we can get through these projects much quicker, uh, typically than a stick built would uh, as well, probably uh, in half the time. So you can save anywhere from 30, 40, 50%, depending on the project, and you can cut the build time in half. Yes. So there are a lot of things to kind of consider. Now, you're not being able to design this thing that's going to, you know, be super kind of sexy that's going to take into all this other sort of geometric shapes that if you have that kind of want in an ADU, an architect is, is a perfect way to go. If you have some budget constraints, you have some sort of a motivating factor. Let's say you have an elderly parent, you need to house, you need to get them out of the super expensive assisted living place, and you need to get them to your backyard. A manufactured home is something to think about. Also too, it is that much faster. Now it's built to a different code than your, your main house. So you need to think about that. If there is going to be you know, appraisals or other issues if for your financing. You just need, there are things I want you to understand you need to ask questions of. And the other part about asking questions, because we are in this manufactured home topic, is not every dealer is going to say they're, the terminology is different. So you need to be able to look at it. Kelly and Ma Williams will delineate the purchase of the home and, and the setup and then the, the site prep. Mm -hmm. Like, could you talk a little bit about that? So as people are out there looking and I, and I, and if I'm repeating myself, I just want to be able to kind of spend some more time on the process of what somebody is going to expect when choosing a manufactured home um, from, let's say, start to finish. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, and actually, so the setup company that we, so in Ma Williams base price, when we give a customer a base price, it includes normal delivery. So no crane or your helicopter, right? So normal <laughs> delivery and setup of the home is included in our base price, which includes the, again, we transport the home to the site. We actually put the sections together. Tom would come and actually build up the foundation, right? That would be part of the site preparation. That, so setup is when we put the sections together. The lowering of the home, the second set is actually the second set was also included in our base price because we know we're going to have to actually lower that house onto the foundation. Again, 95% of what we do needs that lower in that second set. So normal delivery, first set, second set, the drywall completion, if it actually is more than one section, um, carpet and cleaning of the home. So all hookup of the utilities, anything to do basically with the home up is part of Mall Williams. That's all done by actually a licensed C47 licensed contractor. Tom is actually a B licensed contractor. So Tom does anything to do with the foundation of the home, which is provided by the factory, but the foundation and the ground down. So that's kind of the delineation. So Tom will actually do anything, again, foundation, ground down. So pulling the utilities, he would actually, um, he would trench for the utilities, he would build the foundation, he'd build a garage if necessary, he'll pull the permits from the project. Um, he, Tom, he'll do any concrete flat work. What else do you do, Tom? Everything else? Um, well, just, just about anything you would want, uh, typically um, outside of a home. If you want um, decks built, uh, covered patios, um, anything that a normal contractor would provide, uh, in addition to just the structure itself, uh, we certainly include in, in, in our costs if the customer wishes for that. And I think that's what, what Kelly, you touched on, and I want to drill down on that because it is one of the most hardest things for people to understand. Um, and it was for me when I first got into business, is what is included you know, in that base price. And you just did a really good job, and I want to kind of go over that again. You're going to, that is the price, the, the price that Ma Williams is going to charge you includes the home. It includes all the options that you're going to have. So you're going to know and understand that. But it also is the delivery of the home to the site. It's removing the wheels and the axles out from underneath it. It's putting it on its piers and pads and all the supports that it needs per code and the engineered the systems that they provided by the state of California. You mm -hmm. were then taking the sections and putting them together closing them up so that means the ridge line at the top of the roof you're doing all the lag bolts putting on all the shingles and you're having all the inspections that you need 
to have done your calling for those inspections so that we know that, is, that the homeowner knows it's being done right. And then you're also oh. doing the drywall close up, any mm -hmm. sort of paint touch up. And if it's going to be carpet and linoleum, that's easy enough to put down. Mm -hmm. Now, but something else, I'm not sure if you're putting down, you know, luxury vinyl plank, that's mm -hmm. probably additional, additional charge. But right. for the most part, the house is, is done. It's completed. And right. some companies are not doing that. They're saying, here's the price of the home and then the delivery and then the setup. Mm -hmm. If you are listening, watching this, keep that in mind. You want to see how everything is kind of broken out and then spelled out for you in black and white. And I think that's really important if you are spending some time comparing prices of, let's say, a similar product from one company to the next. And again, that's why Ma Williams has been around for 50 plus years, because they have a reputation of being very upfront and very commun communicative of the process to their clients. Yeah, thank you. You know, going back to also, and I don't know if you wanted to talk about this or not, David, but um, the, the different codes of the homes. So the site-built home obviously is built to a different code than the manufactured home. There, there is financing though for a construction loan for the um, for the ADU. Um, so because I think there is such necessity for um, for ADUs right now, and, yeah. and it's not such a niche that all the lenders are saying, oh, how can we actually get that? How can we get a piece of this? So there is actually, there are financing, there's construction loans that they have out there. All the well, the, the, the lender knows that there's actually a different code for the primary versus the ADU um, being different, different codes. But so the lender, there is, you, there is financing out to, there. You can't just go to Chase Bank and say, hey, I oh. want a... <laughs> no, no, you have to have a, you have to have a bank that understands first construction loans. Well, first manufactured homes and secondarily construction loans. So we do have financing available for that. So you have the resources. You're going to be able to say, Hey, they're, they're going to talk to you. I'd like to do a construction loan. Um, what are my options? Right. And it's basically, it's a second on the, on the house, right. On their first, on their primary mortgage, nobody wants to actually redo their primary mortgage right now with the interest rate. So it's actually yeah. a second that's going, that they can actually take a second out and leave their first, their primary loan and keep their, their current interest the same. Uh, that is, yeah, I, I, there's nobody that would want to give up their 3% or 4%. No, 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 no that's, exactly. not, that's, not, that's yeah. not something that you want to be able to do. So on the pricing of the home, because Tom, you are a, um, so you are a GC, you are a general contractor. Correct. So and and I apologize, I did not make that clear earlier. So I want to point that out. So with accessories, are you handling like the the HVAC systems and you're the what are and you, I know you, the Kelly said you said you're doing all the flat work. If you want a garage built, you can build do that. But either one of you can answer this question. So not. An AC, an, a, an air conditioning condenser does not, is that, in, that's not included. That's an, what's called an add-on, an upgrade. It'd be an outside accessory. So that would actually be part of Ma Williams contract. So we can add that in. We actually do have um, an HVAC company that knows manufactured homes and kind of how they all work. And um, it does a good job and, and gives good pricing for that. So customers can come and um, we, we can we can add that into the to the price for them and add that install that after or when it's basically after Edison's got the power onto the house. Okay. And these days a lot of people are talking about uh, mini splits and heat pumps. And are the factories that you're working with, do they allow for sort of getting away from that big, loud furnace unit that's inside the home and allowing for a heat pump or something different? Yeah, people can do heat pumps. Um, working with, well, it was kind of by accident, but there was a, um, there was a house that um, it ended up having, it was an all electric house, couldn't have the two furnaces all electric that it needed. So they were trying to decide if whether they should go heat pump ready or not, right? And then we'd obviously do a heat pump on site. Um, so that's an option we can do. We've also talked to people about doing mini split systems. Um, Silvercrest actually does a, a Genesis product again, 
both Silver Crest and Skyline are owned by Champion. So they have a nationwide kind of a national product that's called the Genesis product. So that product does have a, a mini split system that they've come up with. Um, it's not something I've seen because it's not actually, it's not a product that's a real popular product. So I have not seen it come out and I haven't seen it really come through to fruition. So I'm not sure exactly how it's, how that's going to work. Um, we have, we also had another house that also was, um, had an issue with furnaces that we actually, um, the factory had to fix on site. And then we, with our contractor actually resolved by doing mini split systems as well. So that seemed to work as well. So again, we've used mini split systems a couple of different ways, but not as the primary source. And have you seen any thing where people are saying, I'd like an, an electric hot water heat pump? No, I haven't heard that one before. Yeah, well, we had one because it needed to, we, I, wanted, uh, I, I wanted to have this super energy efficient, you know, all electric. We were thinking we were going to go all electric, but we decided to run gas and how we have gas in for the oven because state of California is trying to get rid of, you know, natural gas. But I, the thing the, of the electric hot water heat pump, it's a super efficient 40 gallon hot water heat system, but it's also almost $3,000 oh. and it is loud. It's like a old refrigerator. And one of the things I was, I was like, yeah, I don't think there's going to be that loud. Well, my 87 year old father-in-law who lives in our ADU says, I hear this humming at night. And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> and I got the quietest, one of the most expensive electric, you know, <laughs> hot water heaters. And this thing is still loud. Oh, So the topic again, because a lot of folks are maybe looking at this and trying to have a, a deeper understanding of a manufactured home ADU the codes do not require solar and it does not require that you have an electric hot water heater, does it? No. So there are some things as people are looking about at the options of a site built um, ADU or a manufactured home ADU. Again, if your property can allow for the delivery of it, there's a long list of things that are going to be, you don't have to do. The state is mandating with stick built that you have to do these energy efficiencies. That's called Title 24. Mm -hmm. So the Title 24, so the, a lot of these don't apply because this Title 25 is, is the governing set of, of codes that regulates manufactured housing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm trying to, because most people don't understand it and I want them to, because I'm mm -hmm. such a strong advocate and proponent of manufactured homes, because if you can save money and save time, because in a perfect world, this is all done under a year. Is that accurate, Tom Kelly? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely, um, unless we have some, um, some uh, circumstances that cause an issue, particularly when we run into issues, it's um, utility provider issues in their timeline. Right. But in terms of our actual ability to pull a permit and um, Kelly's ability to get the home built and delivered and the timeline for us to complete the work. Um, we like to say we can get those done in um, six to eight uh, months. That's fantastic. I mean, because that's most site built projects are double that. Right, right. Very, because, right. and again, when I say double, I'm not talking time on the ground. I'm talking from design, creation of the, the, the floor plan, your permit package that you're going to submit to the jurisdiction, getting your permits issued, talking to a general contractor to get a price, getting on their schedule, getting it built. And then you throw in what Tom just mentioned, having to then talk to your utility provider. We're lucky in Burbank that we we got ours done fairly quickly. You know, our, our permit, permitting was was not that that bad of a process. The, with accessory dwelling, talking about accessory dwelling units, what kind of an interest have you seen, Kelly, from your customers is this because I know you do a lot of land home business with traditional sized you know 1400 1700 square foot three bedroom two bath manufactured homes these are the these are just great housing products uh, but with ADUs a lot smaller now that we have the codes and laws change are you have you seen a big uptick um in your business yeah huge huge we've done you know second units granny flats whatever you want to call it 
forever. We've done them forever, you know? And so, but once they, you know, came out with ADUs and the terminology and the changes and the laws and everything, it's been a huge increase in our business. So I would say, I mean, probably, probably interest wise now, whether it can happen or whether it can't, whether we can fit it behind, you know, the property, whether it comes through or not is one thing, but I would say probably, probably again, 35 to 40% of our business is probably interest in ADUs right now. Wow. And, and, and I would, I don't mean this critically. Ma Williams does not have a huge social media presence. Oh um, yeah. We're working on that, <laughs> but I've got actually my daughter, we just hired, <laughs> we just hired for that. <laughs> so in somebody who is dabbling in social media, it is a tremendous amount of work. One, it is it's yes. very hard, it's hard to do. And and I can understand it, but what it does is, is is reason I can want to bring it up because it's a testament to Mall Williams and their reputation in the community and the area where they work that they don't. It's not something they have to do. Mm-hmm. It's because people know to go to Mall Williams and and talk to them, and and to have I would say probably a more premier experience than other places. It's always good to shop around and kind of see you know what the what there are. But if you're in Southern California, there aren't that many places where you can go see a sales center that has six homes on display. Mm -hmm. And I haven't asked the question, do you have any ADUs? We do. We actually have, um, we have one that actually is slightly over 1200 square feet, um, but can be actually tweaked to be under and people are going to design them themselves anyway. So you can, it's a good floor plan to look at. And then we have another one that is like about 830 square feet or thereabouts is a little single wide with a gorgeous little front porch, which is a great feature to do on ADUs because again, out exterior, um, exterior living area, right? Porches and that kind of thing. They don't count as, you know, living area. So you can build beautiful porches and things on these homes and actually have them be exterior living area. That's great. Um, you know, to, to expand your, your home size without actually having to interfere with the, the square footage area for the, um, the requirements for living area. Anyways, so we have two homes right now that are on display that people can come see for, for um, ADUs. And I think also with the others that are there too, that are on your site, I would imagine you're going to be able to show a lot of the different features of what you can get with like kitchens or bathrooms. I mean, I was recently, I was recently at the Silvercrest plant in Corona and I saw the off the charts shower that they had. And I forget what they call the rainforest or whatever it is, but it was massive. It was just stunning. So there's going to be a lot of features that you can see in a model home that you could then take that feature and then move it into your ADU. Yep. Absolutely. You you can look around. So looking at, and the one thing I always used to tell people years ago is that if you're looking at more than three models, you're going to forget what you saw in the first one. So take take a picture of it and say, okay, what is that really unique thing? We all have our smartphones. So just take pictures, do a video so you can kind of remember what it was that you really liked about it. Well, and we may not have a great social media presence, but we do have a really great website and we have three tours of all of our models. So they can go back to our website and look through the models too. So to <laughs> you know, remember what they saw. And I, that, again, this is, and I am, I'm encouraging people to, if you're looking at an ADU, your property has the space to do it. You should look at manufactured homes, regardless mm-hmm. of where you're going, who, or whoever you're going to be working with, but do take a look at them because there are a lot of advantages and it may outweigh what it is you're looking at. But the part about it, the reason that, you know, we were focusing on this is so little attention is by people that are as good as Ma Williams because they have an established business and are not out on social media having to go say, look at me, look at me. They, they're they already knocking it out of the park and they've been doing it for over 50 years. So there's something that I want people that are watching or listening to this to know. It's like, okay, look at this product. It is it is not like a, a tiny home, which I comment on all the time that's not meant for continuous habitation. You mm-hmm. shouldn't buy that for something you're going to rent out. You could have, you could face a lot of really serious legal consequences and some things that you you shouldn't do that it, because it's a health and safety code. And I I know this is I'm apologize for talking as fast as I am and diving into all this terminology, but the reasons that an ANSI code or the RV code is not continuously habitable is the safe, health and safety code issues. 
So I, I think that's something I want people to do. But so we have a great resource in Ma Williams to be able to say, hey, you can understand it. You can see them. You can walk through them. You can talk about options and upgrades. And you also have somebody like Tom who's going to say, yeah, I'll take care of everything else you need. Yeah. Correct. Garage, flat work, porches, septic system, utility connections. You're, you're handling all that. And, Ma, and, and so this is something where, Kelly, you have someone like Tom who is going to be your primary um, general contractor. But if they okay. someone say some someone had their own GC, mm-hmm. are you going to be able just to say, "Hey, I'll drop off the home"? So it depends if they actually are using financing. Um, that may not be allowed. The lenders a lot of times will require that the contractor is actually approved by them. Um, if not, then I'm willing to look at that as long because again, Ma Williams doesn't make a dime off of any contractor we work with, we work with more than just Tom. Um, So we don't make any money off of the contractors we work with or lenders for that matter. Um, But we do want to make sure that the, if they do have their own contractor, that the contractors that they're working with do have a good understanding and grounding of what they're doing because they will have to work hand in hand with Terra Firma, our setup crew and company. And so we want to make sure that they really know what they're doing. Um, otherwise, they, they can get themselves into a mess. So we, we would want to have a meeting with them and make sure that they understand what's going on. Let's say they had the cash. Would you do yeah. an FOB? Again, we would. But I would want to make sure they know what they're doing. I just, look, it, it comes back to... I, I'm the business that should know what I'm giving to somebody. And if I'm giving something to somebody and they don't know what to do with it, then, then shame on me. So I would just want to have the conversation with somebody first. I wouldn't want to give something to somebody and not have them know what to do with it because then I, I'm really not truly doing them justice. So let's Can I pipe in on that? Yes, too? please, Tom, please. Sure. So um, I think to, to further um, take that a little bit further, uh, we can take um, what I've seen is you can you can be a, a contractor with 30 plus years experience building homes, for example. And so you are uh, you're tasked with uh, taking on a project like this. There is specific knowledge that you need that is specific to manufactured homes. And I think that that's where Kelly is trying to say is that there you can get yourself in trouble if you don't know all of the idiosyncrasies of the process of a manufactured home. And that's where I think where Kelly's coming from is the customer needs to be careful when they're trying to find somebody on their own. This is why Kelly wants to be careful with those customers because they really not only should just be a general contractor or a, uh, or somebody with a fair amount of experience, they need to have intimate knowledge of this process. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be problematic. Thank you for that, Tom, because sure. it, it allowed me to kind of form my next kind of question or just observation. And Kelly, you just touched on it with uh, your setup crew, Terra Firma. So you have, so the setup of the home is, is handled by people that are part of your company or they work exclusively with you doing the setup. And this is the assembly. Manufactured homes are built on steel I-beams. Mm-hmm. They'll basically always be their raised foundation. Mm -hmm. And those steel I-beams, there's typically just two steel I-beams that run down each individual section of that manufactured home, that ADU. And these need to be supported in certain ways. If a non, or even if a poorly qualified C47 company is moving and trying to set up a manufactured home and they'd move it the wrong way, there can be warping or bending to those steel I-beams. And that will affect the home, you know, just from front to front to back. And that's a big issue. Yep. So making sure that as the home is placed and dropped down, you talked about the two sets. It is the probably one of the most critical phases of the home's life. It is being from the factory, it is being delivered, and now it is being set up, and you have to do that right. You have to join the marriage lines together, and you and you and I have both been in this business a long time. We've seen the nightmares, haven't we? Yeah. 
Yeah, we have. And we've experienced them and we've warned people and and they still decide they want to do it themselves and they fight me on it. And then I say, okay, if you really want to, and then it happens and I go, oh, I wish I had it. And again, you, I've been in this business for over 20 years and I in this business for over 20 years. I, again, I've grown up in this business my whole life, but I've been in this business for 20 years and just seeing what I just like, I, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't sold that customer, that house in that way. When I warned them and I said, I really don't want to do this. And then they, they, they get mad at me that I'm not going to do it. And I, okay, okay, fine. Let's, let's do it then. Let's do it. And then you see that the, the nightmare can't comes to life and it's like, it comes to life for them, for us. And it's, it's a nightmare and you just, you wish it, it didn't. And so that again, it's, it's not that I'm trying to make any more money anywhere else. I'll give them the same amount of money that I would actually pay my setup crew and my transporter. I'll give it back to them, but they're not going to have the same success with this different people. Um, again, going to the, to the contractors, general contractors, I, I have a sweet lady, Maria, um, in Nuevo, she decided not to use a contractor that, um, we gave her. And, and again, we have multiple contractors that know what they're doing. And she had a couple of them go out and she said, nope, she doesn't want to use them. She decided to use someone else. I think it's been two years and she still doesn't have her certificate of occupancy. And again, wow. she's the nicest lady in the world. So it's those kind of stories that I just, I wish, I wish that people would let us help guide them a little bit more, but sometimes they try to save a dollar. And what's that saying? They save a dollar to that they pay a ten dollars, yes. whatever the saying is, it doesn't work. <laughs> it is, and I think that um, you're bringing up a very good point. You're trying to look at an ADU from out of state or from somebody who's just going to sell it to you and say, "Yeah, you can take care of everything else." You got to be careful. Yeah. Um, ninety percent, ninety-five percent, ninety-eight percent of the contractors out there are not C forty sevens. It's a very small number. And if you go on the contractor's licensing board and you type in C-47 for the various counties and you start to call them, some of them may be out of business or closed up shop, but their license is still there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying to find a C-47 to do some setup in Indio. And I have I've never thought I'd have to do this, Kelly. And have an, an Excel spreadsheet of all of the C-47s and just contact them and then highlight the ones in red that are closed out of business. And I have three of them on the line item on that on that spreadsheet it is is interesting to see and and it is very important to understand that having a having the home set up in a critical manner and yes again again if you're listening to this the importance of understanding those components is critical yeah. that or you just go to someplace like ma williams and say i want an adu and you leave it to them because they'll take you from start to finish and they'll finish it up and you and then real quickly on the C47 too, when you have a C47 licensed contractor too, there's a lot of them that just set in parks and setting in a park is a very different, easier right. thing than actually setting on someone's property um, on land. It's, it's, there's a different element to it. And so that's, um that's another component of it as well. Thank you for bringing that up. Cause you're absolutely right. Cause manufactured home communities or mobile home parks, which you're referencing and referring to, are very standardized and very and set up. The infrastructure is right there. You have your water, gas, power, sewer lines are all in the like a pedestal kind of it's a configuration. They're grouped very closely, and most of them are. So you just kind of deliver the home, set it up, and plug it in. This is not, they don't worry about septic systems or wells or having to run, you know, having to connect in electricity from power poles that may be, you know, hundreds of yards away. Right. So those are different things you have to kind of um understand and kind of talk about what share with me kind of some a story i mean here we are talking about accessory dwelling units Does anything kind of pop into mind that you would want to share with people that are are here with us listening is watching this as, and they're thinking about an adu as a manufactured home what would be your your recommendations or your thoughts or your suggestions hmm. <laughs> no, i put you on the spot <laughs> <laughs> Um, I definitely come walk through the homes. A lot of times, I think a lot of times what you think you want may not be what you need, I guess is maybe a way to put it. So come walk through the homes, come take a look through them and see kind of, um, 
what what they're about, what they look like, how they feel. There's so many different design elements too that you can that you can you know get. You can do a shed roof that's got a gorgeous look to it. Um, there's there's so many different things, and I'm trying to think of. I mean, there's so many customers, Tom. I can think of you know going back that that we've helped over the years, and they you know it's. Um, I guess the I think of the they all pretty much are happy now going through it is another story i would say um just as a heads up to everyone it's not an easy process it's it's a dirty messy process and it's um it's frustrating at times i would say utilities are probably the biggest hurdle for everyone to overcome like when you're finally at the end and you think you're there that's when the utility companies go, ah, you're going to wait a little bit longer. And then you just have to kind of like sit around and wait for them to basically finalize everything and turn everything on. So that's a frustrating process for people. But in the end, they're happy. I mean, we talk to them with service and stuff, and they usually say that at the end, right? You know, even if they're giving us little service items to fix on the house, they say, you know, they give us a list for the day at the end, they say, but we're really, really happy in our home. So I guess, I guess that's my only thing is that I would say that that is that um just know it's a process it's a long process to go through and um and i we will help you through it I, I don't know i don't know i'm trying to think of other other customers and specific well, I, I have, stories I have I can a, give a story you. that's going to be right in line with that but tom what, okay. what would you say people you know you're sharing with people about the process what would you want them to keep in mind um sure so um i, I think kind of like what kelly's saying it, it is a process there. Um, it doesn't always run smoothly. There's going to be hiccups in the process. And uh, we've mentioned some of those that are the most likely ones. And when we talk about uh, manufactured homes and we talk about how quickly we can get them done, let's say compared to a stick built, uh, the stick built takes a, a bit longer, which gives the utility companies a little bit more time to design their systems to where timelines might match up better at the end of the project where we Good can get point. in and get out so quick that the if there's design work involved, let's say with an electrical connection, um, they just don't get through that design work uh, fast enough and we're done with the project. We have a certificate of occupancy, but the poor customers can't move in because they're just still waiting for power. And so it's part of our job to try to initiate that process as soon as we possibly can. When we get involved with the project, as soon as we are allowed to initiate that process with the, uh, the uh, utility providers, we know from experience that that's gonna be a likely holdup at the end of the project. So, so that's really critical that we get that part done. Um, but other than that, in terms of, um, uh, we do have customers, of course, that um, are anxious because they want to get in. But it's like Kelly said, we'll get callbacks uh, a year later because they want some additional work done and they're very happy. They've done their landscaping and they're really uh, they're really pleased with their product. And um, and we like to take uh, pictures of some of those projects. So uh, uh, because they're success stories for us and and it is something you can probably relate to as well. You're in this business is that you we choose to build relationships, long relationships with our customers. That's what we prefer. We want to have that relationship after we're done. Uh, and so we form friendships and relationships uh, that uh, last down the road. And that translates into referrals. And, um, and so that's how it works. It works for me. Um, I get referrals. I get people that come back that say, hey, uh, you did this job for me and uh, I have a friend. And so naturally I send them to, to uh, Kelly and, and that's how business works, right? That's how it should right. work. Yeah. No, it, it, it should be. And there's a couple of things you, you touched on, Kelly and, and Tom, is where when we were going through our process, neither my wife and I had any true understanding of what having construction in your backyard is was going to be like. And I don't think anybody does because you're living, we most are living in the primary home and have all this stuff go on is it is disruptive. 
And as we're going through the process, you know, we hired an interior designer because my wife and I just did not have the time to do the level of work that we wanted to have done for her father. And both of us were really stressed out. And our designer, who was a wonderful lady, said, you'll get through it. And I think you basically said that too. Said it will, it, it may not be the most comfortable. You may be stressed out. You may be waiting. Um, so design is not going to be something that you're going to have to worry about because you guys are going to take care of that and help people with it. But having to wait on the utilities to come and power up something and wait months for it could be frustrating because they're Tom's already done. You were already done. The home is ready. could be lived in. I could hook up a, a generator and I could live in it. Yeah. And you're just like, we, we have to wait. And I think that's important for people to keep in mind. And Tom, you did a great job kind of laying it out. And I never really thought about this until you said it. It's like, you're going to be done and your timelines are typically so much faster than normal that any sort of sort of coordination with a utility to you know, bring in the electric meter or to kind of get the gas meter this there, it may take some a significantly longer amount of time. That's right. Even though you put in the request for that when you started in, in the beginning, you're not delaying anything. You just happen to be finished so much quicker with a manufactured home. Correct. Correct. That is correct. And, and when we do a site assessment, uh, uh, when I do a site assessment, I see these things right away. I have a pretty good idea what's going to be involved with um, how we're going to get power to these projects. And we know some shortcuts where we know ways to avoid some of the design work that's necessary. So we're going to we're going to try to point that out to the customer, give them the options. Uh, but in essence, we have to get a planner out as soon as possible to help us get uh, the final design of how this is going to be provided. But we try to find the easiest most cost-effective, efficient way to get them their utilities. And thank you for that. And I know we're just going to, I want to be sure to wrap up at 3.30. And I want to talk more about Ma Williams and your service area. So you are in Hemet, California. And what is the area that you will work in? So we'll work in San Diego, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties. So there are some areas within those areas, though, that we don't have a contractor that will work um, in so some um, some areas of like the low desert um, some the the we have about um, let's say we have about um, four or five contractors that we work with right now and the this so the spread of that area there's that area they just won't go down into they're, they're like each contractor's coverage area, right? So that actual area. So again, if, if customers can call us and let us know kind of what areas they, you know, they're, they have land or they're thinking about actually buying land or, you know, where obviously for ADUs, where their property is, um, where they're thinking about putting their ADUs, we can let them know if we can help them or not. Cause we definitely want to make sure that we can, obviously we have a, a, a contractor like Tom or Tom that actually can work in their area. So San Diego County. Mm -hmm. Riverside County, mm -hmm. San Bernardino, uh -huh. and did you mention a fourth? No, that's it. That's it. Okay, but that's a pretty big area. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. So yeah, there are some cities within again those areas, or some areas within those areas we can't we can't work. But I understand for the general part. That's good. And um, the last few minutes, talk to me about a timeline as you've seen it, or that you would say. Let's say, hey, I'm I'm sending somebody over to you. They're coming in, sitting down. They have an appointment. They come sit down uh, in the next week, and they have a pretty good idea of what they want. Or they're going to be able to go into one of your lot models and say, I love that vaulted ceiling, or I love that nine foot ceiling, and I I want that configuration of the countertops and the cabinets. I don't need to make any other decisions. I'm super easy. Mm -hmm. And they, and they can, and so for the salesperson, that's going to be like a dream. It's like, wow, I just need to start checking boxes. The super easy customer comes in, sits down, specs it out, has cash. Nope, mm -hmm. no appraisal, no lending issue. They got the HELOC because they've owned their, their house here for a, more than a minute in California and they have equity. Okay. What is a timeline in your mind, a reasonable timeline? They start the conversation with you spec it out, super simple, working with somebody who's efficient as Tom is, when are they including the utility companies when, and some reasonable expectations of time? 
how long is it? We're assuming they're on sewer. Sewer, no septic. Okay, that's good. <laughs> right, Tom? Per perfect situation. <laughs> so I'd say one, two, three. Um, let's say four. So you can don't need engineering. Let's say you don't need engineering from the factory, Tom. One, two, three, four. Um, Tom, how long do you think it'll take you to get permits right now? Well, um, of course, that is a loaded question. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it, it is. <laughs> it, it's primarily a loaded question because it's it's uh, jurisdiction, jurisdiction specific. Uh, depending on some cities, some cities are very hard to work with. They some cities, uh, they're going to want um, some sort of a design review process versus just a simple here's uh, we're submitting our plans. Um, this is the floor plan, the um, elevations, and we create a site plan and that's it. Um, so that uh, we like to say about two months for a permit process. Sometimes that can be longer depending on what city we're dealing with and if we're dealing with a city versus county. But remember, we're talking about a perfect scenario here. So two months is great. Yeah, a perfect scenario, I would say um, two months, yes. Yeah, uh, okay. Let's say four and then we take says, so so. let's see, we're saying two, so you said two months? Permits. Yes. To get permits, two months to get permits. So that would be say three months in the first part and then about two months to build a house. So we're at five months for us to deliver the house. And then how long on site, Tom? Uh, perfect like scenario. Perfect scenario is two months. Okay. All right. So we're looking at, we're looking at probably six to seven months on site. Done. Six to seven. Perfect scenario, time they walk in to the time is completed mm -hmm. and they have their keys. Mm -hmm. So that is, if you've made it this long in the recording or the podcast, that is twice as fast. Um, hands down, no question, in a perfect scenario. But things like delays with utility companies and getting permits. And if the jurisdiction does have some sort of design review that they want to try to saddle that particular homeowner with, of course, it's going to change. But that's just kind of a good sort of guideline to have because there, this is new construction and there are a lot of things that can happen that can affect it. But in a perfect scenario, six to seven months is so much faster than you have any idea of. It is going light speed because, and you won't be able, most consumers, homeowners are not going to be able to make all of the decisions that they want to or need to that fast. I mean, and I use the 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 scenario that they walked into one of your models and said, just give me those. Most people are not going to be doing it for the price that they're going to spend because it's new construction. And it's going to be number one thing is for a family member, or maybe it's that for them, or maybe they want to rent it out to whoever. They may want some sort of upgrades. And again, there are a lot of upgrades. You can upgrade your cabinets, your countertops, your appliances. Because the other part that we have not touched on is that with manufactured homes, even though they have, I said earlier on, they have to be habitable, your manufactured home is going to come with the appliances that you chose, a refrigerator, a dishwasher, a garbage disposal. You're going to have a furnace system. It's going to have it all in there. So you don't have to go out and buy it and worry about it like I did. I had to ask um, the appliance company to hold it for three months because I we had delays. And then it sat in the middle of the ADU after the roof was on there for another two months. And I had to wrap it with plastic so that all the drywall mud wouldn't damage it. <laughs> so there's a lot of, again, efficiencies. Wow, there are, are a ton of them. So that's, again, manufactured homes come with a lot of efficiencies because the appliances are there. The countertops, the cabinets, the flooring is typically there. And speaking of flooring and upgrades, you can omit the flooring and do something wild and crazy that you want, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you could put tile down. You can do, again, you know, vinyl plank, the waterproof vinyl plank. Um, you could do really anything you want. So and I yeah. think that's a great, a fantastic upgrade. What if... if Kelly, you were going to do your ADU and you, you had 
an unlimited budget, how would you configure yours? Hmm. I would probably do, I would do a shed roof. Okay. I think their shed roofs are so cute. I would do, actually, I would do a shed roof. I would do the, um, the stacked windows with the, as many sliders as I could, because with head homes, glazing is not an issue where with, a, as you know, um, if you do IBC code, you have to worry about glazing and you know how much, how much light you're getting and all that kind of stuff. With manufactured homes, you can have as many windows as you possibly want. Let me inter- interrupt you because cool. I touch on this a lot. Title 24 is what she's talking about. So the title 24 energy efficiencies. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. with a manufactured home, throw that out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Have as many windows as you want. So if you have a cool view or you want to actually build a cool little deck, which is what I would do off of it, then I would do a deck off of it. And I would probably do, I would probably do, I'd probably do tile on the inside. I'm looking at my house. <laughs> <laughs> looking around I'd probably do tile I think I like the I like the coolness of tile and then um hmm, that's about as far as I can think of right now upgrade would you, appliances would you do um two by four or two by six exterior walls I do two by six it increases the insulation inside a 22 from an 11 so that's really cool um yeah that's that's amazing and then let's say that this ADU is going to be in the urban area. And I think you mentioned that, Tom, depending, you've mentioned fire. So sometimes to do pull permits or to do work, Kelly, you or you or Tom, wooey, wildland urban interface. We didn't talk about that. Mm-hmm. So if you could, Kelly. Sure. So yeah, wildland urban interface, wooey code is actually, you're going to build the home with the, again, any windows, whether it's, um, whether it's slider doors or windows will actually come with one of the panes tempered. Um, they do actually um, an underlayment on the shingles with, um, I don't even know exactly what it is, but they do an underlayment on the shingles for the code. And then they actually change out all the roof fence from plastic to metal. And um, they build it basically to meet the fire high fire code. And, Tom, and it's you only have... if it's if you're in that code where you actually are in a high fire code. But right. it seems like everything in California these days is a high fire code. So, yes. yeah. And so, Tom, are you handling sprinklers or the connection to that if, if somebody needed them or is that a subcontractor? Uh, well, so these homes, when we know that they're going to uh, if the customer wants or it's required um it, to have fire sprinklers the home is um ordered with the fire sprinkler system so there is generally going to be a separate a water connection for us to make on the outside of that home uh which we do so having the factory install the the sprinkler system again uh, hugely efficient and for you on site it's a much much simpler Oh yeah, yeah, and again, it's that it's that one. That's one more step that is eliminated in our process um, on site. Um, also, uh, what's uh, noteworthy too is that, uh, say for example, you want to add a garage to a sprinkler home, and you want that garage sprinklered, or it's required to be sprinklered. We can order the home with a stub out. Um, out of the house that goes into the attic space of the garage. So it eliminates uh, uh, what essentially would have to be a separate sprinkler system for the garage. So now the garage sprinkler system is actually just an addition to the sprinkler system in the home. Uh, I just learned something for the first time. I never knew that. Yes. Yeah. So so, so if, if we didn't have that stub out from the home into the garage, you would have a separate fire bell uh, you would have a totally fu- a separate system than the home. And if we are on the ball, we will have that usually stubbed out in the attic space where it would stub from um, the how- from the home uh, into the attic space of the garage. And it is a simple extension of additional sprinklers at that point. Because you are integrating with the, the manufactured home's fire sprinkler system. Correct. Okay, that was fantastic. Um, I did not know that. Um, there, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that Kelly knows that I have no idea about. Because again, generational experience with with manufactured homes, I think it's 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 really really great. 
Um, everybody who's been on this, who, and there's been a, a, a few people here, thank you for listening and watching um, wherever you are. And we will definitely have this recording available on the ADU University website. And we'll probably put some clips of it on our YouTube channel so people can kind of um, learn a few little tidbits. And I've, I've been making notes feverishly as I'm like, okay, I need to make sure to grab that particular clip of something that Kelly or Tom said. I want to thank you both for all of your time today. I'm, I know you're both very busy people. So to give me just about an hour and a half of it is, is highly appreciated. So thank you sure. for that. Um, any sort of closing comments? I mean, Kelly, I didn't ask you, what's the best way to get a hold of you or how, if somebody wants to reach out, how, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go on our website, mowilliamshomes.com. You can also go to, you can call us at um, our office, 951-926-1581. Um, you can email me direct at kelly at mowilliamshomes.com. So we, we really, and I really appreciate you taking the time to actually put all this together, David. This was, um, this was great to be a part of. Well, I'm happy to do it. And Tom, how do people get in touch with you, sir? Uh, sure. Um, you can contact me uh, through Kelly for one. Perfect. <laughs> uh, but uh, also uh, email address is pain, P-A-Y-N-E, concrete at yahoo.com or 951-491-3698. And I'll make sure people, if you didn't get that, you don't have to rewind it. It'll be in the description so that you'll be able to find it and have the links to these wonderful people. For all of your time again, thank you both very, very much. I wish you all the the world of success, and that we you never have an upset client ever. Thank you, David. <laughs> you guys have a great you day. You as well. Thanks, David. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. bye, bye. Tom. Bye. bye, -bye.